I, I built a basic interpreter very, very early on. I sat down and written one from scratch. And I'd made all the decisions for it. And some of those decisions were clearly influenced by more conventional languages, BCPLC, as it would become. Um, so it looked quite unlike other basics while being significantly more powerful. Um, uh, the indirection operators for accessing memory, um, the uh, ACON basic had been evolving anyway. So it, uh, the, the version that we were able to show them running on system range computers um, was one of my prototypes for Proton basic. So P basic already had lots of uh, structures that made it into BBC Basic, because um, I'd already written those things. Um, so it was a it was a language that was somewhere between Algol 60 and C in, in general intents while being basic, um, but had all all the recognizable features that we'd already established. So BBC Basic does 32-bit integers, not 16-bit integers as other basics did. It did 40-bit floating point. Um, it had arbitrary length variable names, all characters of which were meaningful. Um, it had structures. It was simply that BBC Basic was used as a general purpose stitch things together language for all the control products that we had. It, it was something accessible um, without people having to write it in assembler, which let's face it, in, in machines that didn't have hard drives and only had floppy disks, compilers really weren't a thing. In, interpreters were the best you could have. And we had a fast, flexible, basic interpreter for people to use. Um, it had been fairly well proven in the Atom, but it was quite good and quite quick. And features like its inline assembler, so that you could write a program that was mostly in BASIC and had some critical high performance routines written in machine code, were well liked by its users, particularly in the control scene. So, BBC BASIC is a fairly big implementation. Um, so when the BBC saw the prototype, it was about 10K of object code. Um, the final ROM is 16K. And the charges for getting mass ROM made in 16K sizes in those days were quite high. So we had a very extensive set of people trying to break BBC Basic both within the company and everybody who got BBC machine prototypes, um, system range prototypes. So a lot of system range machines went out to people to, to learn about BBC Basic and help debug BBC Basic. Um, meanwhile, the BBC were trying to change the specification. So some things that were in the prototype language were things like go to label instead of go to line number and they wanted that gone. They wanted it to go back to line number. They kind of liked my file IO world, which was much more like BCPL than um, ordinary basics. So I got to keep a lot of that, but they wanted its syntax to be made closer to standard basics. And they wanted the syntax of print to be made closer to standard basics. So those things happened. Um, uh, but they were quite happy with all the, the structured programming features. Run up to sending away 16 kilobytes of machine code 
to be wronged with Herman impressing how important it was to get it right was quite bad. Um, most of the interpreter was running around inside my head as I peered at it, trying to make sure there weren't any mistakes. Um, which basically there weren't. But I mean, the, um, it, was, it was quite hard. Um, uh, uh, well, doubly hard in that I was involved in the design of the machine and the operating system as well at the same time. Andy Hopper put the first declassified risk uh, research on my desk. And we read about those and thought, hmm, interesting. But we didn't really think we could build our own stuff. But then we visited National Semiconductors in Israel and were really convinced we couldn't build our own stuff. So National were getting the 16032 wrong time after time. Um, we first saw it at revision D, and by the time it had reached revision J, I think it was, you might have been able to sell it to a customer. Uh, and this was clearly bad because yeah, we, we'd wanted to use it, but it still didn't exist in, in a saleable form. Then we went out to the Western Design Center, the originators of the 6502 expecting to find a similar style operation, you know, big tilt up building, lots of engineers. Um, and instead we found that Western Design Center was a couple of bungalows on the edge of Phoenix, Arizona, staffed by a couple of uh, senior engineers and a bunch of grad school kids. And we talked about their upcoming 16-bit processor, 65SC816. And we thought it didn't really fit in with our plans. We would subsequently use it in the Acorn Communicator, but it didn't really fit what we wanted for any of the processes that would be setting processes to um, a proton world. But we did come away thinking, well, that looked a lot easier than we thought other people were making of it. And so we took another look at, look at all the risk papers and suddenly what became borne out as, on us was um, they were barely any better than us. Um, the, the MIPS at Stanford, the Berkeley Risk One, they were also built by some grad school kids and an engineer knew what they were doing. So we began to think, Hmm, if those people can do it, perhaps we can do it. And we just sort of fell into it very gradually that perhaps we could. Now, Herman is key to all this because Herman was a very involved with his staff person. And we'd walk down to have lunch at the nearest pub discussing the technical stuff. So designing ARM, I'd come up with ideas for instructions and Steve and I would discuss how we could possibly implement them. And if Steve decided we couldn't possibly implement them, then they'd have to go away. So you might want a decrement and branch shift non-zero type of instruction, but if Steve couldn't work out how that would fit in with his developing microarchitecture, you couldn't have one. And, and eventually we didn't. Um, but we'd talk all, all about our progress in this with Herman and he'd push us a bit further each time. And eventually, yes, we did build one. And it, and it, was, it was just another complicated piece of digital logic like what we've been used to building. Um, but again, I suppose what, what really matters is how you tackle it, like, like verifying BBC Basic what mattered was engaging a lot of people with the same mission. So designing a microprocessor, what really matters is how you validate it and verify it. Um, so we, we pressed everybody into service. Out of the ARM chips, something like um, the first nine of them that we built at Acorn were all 
fit for purpose first time, which doesn't mean to say we didn't make mistakes. There were mistakes in the IO controller. Um, there was a mistake in arm one where the, the tape right with extend didn't work as designed. And by, but by and large, everything was a funding success, a, a complete contrast to what we'd seen in other companies with chip revisions.